Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek News. I'm here with Zev Schlossinger from Z-Man Games. How you doing? And we're here looking at Tragedy Looper, uh, originally published in Japan. Japan, yes, absolutely. And now coming from Z-Man Games. Yes, absolutely. We're uh, shooting for a Gen Con release. Okay, Gen Con 2014. Just oh, make, oh, the, yes, make that. Just by the date. So maybe you can give an overview of the game here. This is obviously not final components. This is based the original ones. You this got paste ups right now and exactly. some. Exactly. You can see okay. paste ups, Japanese text, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, in this game, this is a um, a time looping game. Uh, the object is uh, the protagonist uh, will be going back in time to make sure tragedies do not happen. The mastermind player is the person that's trying to make tragedies happen. So what happens? Sure, that history unfolds. To ensure that as history as unfolds the way it was meant to be, but the protagonists are there to stop it. So there are it's scenario based. Uh, in this case, this is set up for a particular scenario. So you see characters over here. There are six characters: police officer, office worker, etc. They are in their starting positions. These guys are in the city. You have a hospital. We have a shrine, and we have a school. Uh, on this track here, this scenario will tell you that there's going to be three loops in the game. You'll be starting in day one, of course, and this particular scenario has four days. And over here, this is actually going to be incidents. There's a murder and there's a suicide. So on day two, there's a murder. On day three, there's a suicide. Maybe. Maybe. If correct. you, if the certain conditions unfold. If certain unfold. conditions unfold, correct. Uh, it will happen. Otherwise, if the protagonists uh, know what to do, they can stop that from happening and there'll be some happiness. <laughs> for all. <Okay. laughs> so what they're doing is in the beginning you're thrust into this time period you see these players here the characters are the characters they're not the protagonists those are the players so you really don't know what you're doing yet because you don't know what's supposed to happen you do know there's a murder and a suicide but you don't know the roles of each character here and the characters have certain roles based on the plots that are active in the scenario that you're in. But they um, don't the uh, protagonists don't know the plot either. The protagonists don't know the plot. The protagonists don't know the plot. They don't know the roles of the characters. Only the mastermind knows what's what, who's who, and what's supposed to happen by whom. Uh, so how you get to determine uh, how things are going is everyone has a set of cards. The protagonists all have the same set of cards, as you can see here. Some of them add what's called paranoia. Some will add goodwill. Some are movement cards. Some are forbid movement. And you have uh, a forbid entry. Uh, what that means is there are cards, there are tokens for the paranoia level of characters. And paranoia usually affects incidents. So a particular character can commit suicide suicide if, the, if it's the specified character in the scenario and they have a maximum number of paranoia points, which is listed in the top left corner of the characters. Intrigue is stuff that can be placed usually by the mastermind and that's the behind the scenes action. So that's where the uh, uh, either specified by the scenario that they're pushing the, the, the roles of the characters to start insinuating their, uh, their evil plans, so to speak. Basically to make the tragedies unfold. Uh, the mastermind also has a set of cards and a lot of them are similar to what the protagonists have, but again, they are able to place intrigue. Uh, they also have a special movement, which is a diagonal movement, which can affect things right here. Um, and they can also put paranoia and remove uh, paranoia. Uh, these cards are played by the mastermind first. He plays three cards face down, and then each of the protagonists play a card. So there'll be six cards on the board, three by the mastermind, three by the protagonist. All right, you, let me just mention as well, it's, uh, you, it's gonna be a two to four player it, it game. It will be a two to four player game. Uh, what it, it, with four players, you play one mastermind, three protagonists. Uh, with three players, okay. it's the one protagonist plays two sets of cards, and if there's two players, the protagonist plays all sets of cards. Um, so you play the cards and we reveal them and reveal them. see what happens with all the, yes, the possibilities. Yes, and then you the resolve movement. all the actions and then we go through certain steps. The, as the mastermind, they'll be able to play certain things if conditions are right. The protagonist, if you notice I mentioned the goodwill counters. Goodwill counters, the characters have goodwill abilities recognized by the hearts over here. When there's enough goodwill on a character, the leader of the protagonist can try to activate the character's special ability. However, depending on the role of the character, the mastermind could refuse that action. But 
that gives a clue as to what the what that character could be and you will have a summary card that shows what plots can be active and what roles are available to those plots and then of course what those abilities are of, right. of those roles which are all specific to each scenario so they yes, change it's all it. scenario based correct so if for example there's a murder plot afoot you'll know that there's a key person the victim there's a brain the person behind it all and then there's a killer the person to enact the the murder so you just have to figure out oh we know there's a murder plan so we need to know who's the killer who's the victim and who's the brain behind the operations okay. and this is what happens that you are trying to deduce all the uh, the roles based on things that happen but in this in this game if a character dies or if the protagonist die the loop ends you reset everything but counters stay on the characters and then you go to another loop you go to the second loop so you go in you jump back in time to where you started but you are armed with hopefully more information than when you started so again in this scenario you have three loops to figure out what's going on in four days if the protagonist can stop anyone from dying including themselves in the four days they do win so that's and that's in the basics and I'm sorry in the introductory set in the basic set if you are if you die through all the loops you do get one chance to win the game and that's by making a final guess and that's trying to guess the roles of each characters so you can extrapolate that they basically loop back an infinite number of times until they figured out everything but of course we're not going to be playing for an infinite number that's of right. hours that's right. um, and that's uh, the gist of the game I believe all right Super. Uh, any changes to the art? Are you keeping the original art? And we are trailer? keeping the art. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, did, I believe pretty much everything's being kept. We are changing some of the components uh, to... Uh, and terminology and, and all sorts of things. Yes, yeah. and definitely terminology and, and fixing up the language and things like that. All right. Yes. Cool. I, and the game comes with 12 scenarios. So. All right. Thanks very much for the overview, Zev. I know you, you had mentioned beforehand, uh, before we went on camera and everything, there's a couple of expansions out in Japan. Uh, in so, Japan, of course. Yes. In Japan, there are two expansions uh, with more scenarios and a couple more character cards. So, yeah, should this be a success, we should be able to bring over those expansions. And there you go. Thanks very much.